If you want to make successful splits, the key is to get the right amount of brood, pollen and honey into your nuke, if that's where you're putting your split, and to get the queen in the right place. If you're doing a split to prevent that main hive from swarming, then you need to get the queen into the nuke box. If you're doing a split to make a mating nuke or to just make a nuke that to produce a new hive for yourself or to sell later on, then you don't want the queen in your nuke. I'm filming this inside because I don't have to worry about getting stung, I don't have to have a veil over my face so you can see me, you can see my beautiful looks, and I can smile and you know I'm smiling. So finding the queen is really important. There's a couple of ways you can do that. The first is the traditional way of going through the hive frame by frame and searching for her. If you've got some experience in beekeeping that may not be an issue for you, for some people that's a real challenge. But you really do need to know where that queen is. If you can find her that way, that's great. Isolate her, put her where she needs to be. If she's, uh, if she's going to stay in the main hive, then put her somewhere where she can't walk onto the other frames while you're making your nuke. I'm going to show you an easy way to work out where the queen is without actually finding her. It's not difficult. But the first thing you have to do is to spread the brood evenly between the two boxes of the double deep that you're splitting. You can't see at the moment that this is a double deep, so I'll just move that camera angle. So if you want to find the queen, what you need is a queen excluder. You need to be organized to use this method because you have to do it three days before you do your split. What you do, quite simply, is pull the top brood box off. You'll see some tape on these frames. I'll explain in a minute what that's about. Put your queen excluder on. And put your top box back on again. Obviously, if it's a real hive with bees in it, you're going to put your lid on and your inner cover and all that stuff. The next step is to go away for three days. Now what's going to happen is that the queen is going to carry on laying. We don't know which box she's in. But what we do know is that when we come back, Whichever box has got eggs in it is going to be the box that the queen's in. And we can isolate the queen simply by taking that box and putting it to one side. So let's imagine that the queen is in this top box when we come back three days later. So we simply pull it off the hive, put it somewhere safe, never sit that box straight down on the ground on the grass, put a lid under it, or if you've got a stand to sit it on, put something solid underneath. Because if the queen is in that box, well we know she's in it because that's where the eggs are, she could fall out of that and you might not spot her. So you don't want to do anything in this process that risks the queen. So now I'm just going to bring the camera a bit closer so you can see what this tape's about. So what I want you to do is to imagine that this is a box of bees and that this is a typical brood chamber, the frames, representing frames that have got brood on them. You may be able to spot it on the camera, but I've marked the outside frames, they've got pollen on them. Now that's the normal configuration that you would see in a hive if it, everything is stock standard. Not every hive is in that configuration, but that's the most common that you'll find as you're inspecting a hive. So do you split. We know the queen's not in this box. We've got our five frame nuke here, which is empty. Normally when I'm doing splits, I arrive in the bee yard with a five frame nuke full of frames because I need five frames. I'm gonna take frames out of this box, put them into the nuke, and I need frames to replace them. So before I head off into the yard and do splits, I load up all of my nukes with frames, preferably drawn comb, but it's not essential, especially if it's during a flow. So what are we looking for now? We're simply looking for a couple of good frames of brood. If we're going to requeen this with a queen cell or a mated queen, then capped brood is what you're looking for. Bees in that capped brood will emerge sooner 
and require less work than if it was uncapped brood. So let's imagine we've got here two frames of nice capped brood. I should point out that if we're making this to do a walk away split, one of those frames of capped, uh, start again, one of those frames of brood needs to have eggs in it. Then we go looking for a frame that's got honey and pollen in it, and we add that in. Then we get another frame of stores of honey or nectar, and we put that in. And then generally, I will put an undrawn frame like that in as well to give them somewhere to expand to. Now those frames of brood had bees on them. I've jumped the gun a little bit. I'm going to take that frame out again. What I'm also going to do, I'm going to get the frames of brood that are still in this box and I'm going to shake all the bees in there. I want a good population of bees in this box to cover this brood and to keep it warm. You don't need to use a five frame nuke to do a split. You can do it into a 10 frame box if you like. But if you do, you just be, need to be aware that the bigger the box, the more space the bees have to heat and therefore the less energy they've got left over to look after brood and to help a new queen. So if you're using a 10 frame box, it pays to put more bees in, lots more bees in. So I've shaken one, two frames of bees into there, and that will give me a good strong nuke. Now the, the strength of the nuke and the amount of brood that you put in is really dependent on why you're making the nuke and what time of year it is. If you're making nukes splits to bee nukes that you're going to sell, then you want them very strong and you'll put in big frames of brood and lots of bees. If you're making a mating hive, you can get away with it being a bit weaker. Sometimes I'll make a split with just one frame of brood, but then it'll get a feeder on top. Once we've made that split, we then need to decide where we're going to put it. Are we going to leave it in the apiary where we made the split or are we going to take it somewhere else? It's easier to get this split going if you take it somewhere else, but it's not 100% essential. You just need to be aware that every, if you leave it in the apiary where it was made, every field bee is going to go back to the original hive and the number of bees in there is going to dwindle significantly. So you do need to keep an eye on it and you may need to shake more nurse bees in there to bring the population back up. Otherwise you risk the brood getting cold and dying out. All right, so we've made our split. We've either put a uh, mated queen in a queen cage into it or a queen cell, or we're letting it make its own queen. You can't see it, but the front of this hive, this hive, this nuke has been in storage outside, so the entrance is blocked up, so it can't get robbed by robber bees. Make sure when you're making your splits that you check the entrance and make sure it's clear before you walk away. If you are leaving the nuke that you've made in the same apiary as the donor hive, then a good tip is instead of simply taking frames of brood out of this hive and shaking them into here, because you know that as you do that, some of those bees are field bees, you can do an intermediate step. You can take those frames and shake them instead into a bucket. And what'll happen is that if you leave that bucket sitting around for a while, those field bees, most of them, will take off and leave, and what you're left with is the nurse bees. And then you can pour those into this box, and that will significantly increase the chance of this box maintaining its population while it's in the same apiary as the donor hive. The next step is to replace these frames with preferably drawn comb. I'd bring all the resources into the middle, and put new frames around the outside and then put the hive back together again. And that's it, that's making a split. Imagine that I've filled that up with frames. I don't need to put the queen excluder back in. I can simply put that back, box back on top. Ideally, if the queen's in this box, I wouldn't actually put it back on top, I'd put it on the bottom 
and put the box that's got empty frames in it above it. But that's just my personal preference. So making splits is pretty straightforward and it's very satisfying. You can build up your hive numbers very quickly. If you've got a huge double deep hive full of brood and you want more hives, you can easily split that down into five nukes. No trouble at all. Five nukes, including putting the queen that's in here into a nuke to let her get going again. Because she's a mated queen and is uh, in full laying mode, she'll fill that nuke up very quickly and she'll have to go back into a 10 frame box within a matter of weeks in the summertime when there's good flow. I want to do a shout out to all the great people that make comments and give me good feedback. And for those of you watching regularly, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.